In previous moon fakers, I showed examples that indicate that the lem exhaust should have been clearly noticeable in the liftoff videos. Former moon hoax conspiracy theorist Vincent McConnell released a response in which he raised some objections that had been previously brought up by others. I addressed all of them in a little follow-up video. Since then, there have been further objections. As you may already know, one example I showed in my video was this 16mm clip from Apollo 9. It shows a spacecraft off in the far distance emitting a bright plume. I suspected that this was most likely Lunar Module Spider, as that craft performed a number of ascent and descent burns during the time it was undocked. I have since been informed that this clip was used in the 1969 NASA documentary Apollo 9, 3 to make ready. Next, the S-4B engine would be ignited to send it away from Apollo 9, away from possible interference with their complex mission. Apollo 9, uh, Houston. Looks like we're going to be right down his tailpipe. Ignition on the S-4B. On the way. It's just like a bright star disappearing in the distance. The two images look pretty similar, Although the 1969 clip is mirrored, has a much larger plume, a bluish tinting, and a lot less camera shaking. I had to flip my copy of the footage and reframe it to get the two craft to line up on top of each other. Now it's possible that the editor of this 1969 documentary edited out some of the camera shaking and added a bluish tint, but the plume in the 1969 video is distinctly more prominent. In this 1969 documentary, an audio track from the Apollo 9 mission is added. Command pilot Jim McDivitt says, It's just like a bright star disappearing in the distance. Ignition on the S-4B. On the way. It's just like a bright star disappearing in the distance. A search of the Apollo 9 transcript reveals that this line indeed refers to the S-4B ignition. The transcript also documents a statement by LEM pilot Rusty Schweikart. We got some movies, but I'm not sure there'll be any good. He's pretty far out. So it seems this video may in fact just show the S-4B stage after all. I don't know for sure, but I'll discount this as an example for now. I'm not going to lose sleep over this because, to be perfectly frank, this is hardly the only example I used. One of my other examples included this photo of the LEM descent engine being tested in a vacuum chamber. The plume is quite bright and very noticeable, and would stand out like a sore thumb against a black background. Interestingly, not one member from the pro-NASA side has dared comment on this vacuum chamber picture. Instead, it seems they'd much rather focus on the videos of the LEM engine being tested in an atmosphere and the launch of the Titan II rockets. They allege that what we see is some kind of interaction of the exhaust gases with the atmosphere, possibly a secondary combustion taking place. In my earlier response to McConnell, I pointed out that the combustion products of these propellants are nitrogen, water, and carbon dioxide, all of which are not flammable. Now there will be some traces of hydrogen, methane, and carbon dioxide produced too. Hydrogen produces a bright yellow-white flame when ignited. But without an oxygen fuel source, hydrogen first needs to combine with atmospheric oxygen in order to burn, meaning that there will be a gap at the start of the flame where the oxygen comes in, much like it does with a cigarette lighter. But in both the vacuum chamber tests and the Titan launches, the plume connects all the way to the engine bell. This rules out the possibility that we are seeing the exhaust gases igniting in the atmosphere. Plus, I'm hard pressed to see how tiny amounts of hydrogen could account for flames of this magnitude. Realistically, the only difference I'd expect to see in a vacuum versus a non-vacuum is that in a vacuum, the gases would expand more rapidly and hence cool into the infrared more quickly than they would in an atmosphere. But of course, the set expansion could not take place until after the exhaust had left the engine bell. So we'd expect to see bright light directly beneath it. And this is indeed what we observe in the vacuum testing. Admittedly though, there is an important point I'm overlooking. Which is that both of the ascent and descent engines were fitted with nozzle extensions. And which is absent in this vacuum test. In a vacuum, this extension would allow the plume to expand and cool somewhat before exiting, and this in turn means that the exit plume will be of a dimmer colour. But how much dimmer? 
In thermodynamics, there's a principle called thermal radiation, which tells you how hot something is based on its colour. In both the Titan launches and the ground-based atmospheric tests, and also in the vacuum test, we see the exit plume as either white or yellowish white. On this temperature colour chart, this places the plume as being slightly over 5000 Kelvin. Looking at the nozzle extension, the width of the base appears to be about 1.6 times wider than the top, making its area 2.5 times larger. This means the exhaust pressure can reduce itself 2.5 times before leaving the extension. Now there's also another thermodynamics process called adiabatic cooling that describes how a gas cools when it expands. Without getting overly detailed, there's a formula that tells us how much the temperature will change based on the change in volume and the type of gas. For nitrogen, it works out to be 3,466 Kelvin. For carbon dioxide and water, it comes to 3,684 Kelvin. We'll say an average of 3,500 Kelvin then. Referring back to our temperature colour chart, 3,500 Kelvin corresponds to a light orangish yellow. Bottom line then, we'd expect at least an orange plume to be emerging from the LEM nozzle extension, and this is clearly not the case. Now in both my previous Moonfager and in my response to McConnell, I pointed out that the brief triangular flash we see in the Apollo liftoff videos is more than likely the light reflecting off the Mylar foil and pyrotechnics that were rigged within the descent stage prop. Some have asked why I only use the Apollo 15 liftoff video when making this claim. The reason I only use the Apollo 15 liftoff video is because it is the only one of the three videos that clearly shows the descent structure long after the ascent stage has left the scene. The cameras in the other two videos tilt up and we only see the descent stage for a few seconds. If you watch the Apollo 15 liftoff video, you can clearly see loose mylar foil billowing around and casting a bright light that looks very much like the flash that the propagandists are calling a plume. As to what I think is blowing this foil around, I suspect that the ascent stage prop had some fans built into the bottom to blow this foil around. Kind of similar to what Kubrick had used in 2001, although that film made the mistake of not using millimetre sized particles that wouldn't have billowed in clouds. I suspect that these same fans caused this piece of falling debris to suddenly change its direction as it fell, assuming the said piece of debris was not added in post-production. Yes, the propagandists have recently clutched this falling piece of debris as evidence for their cause, and they call me desperate. I've always been amazed that, when it comes to propagandists, they assume that any minute piece of video or data that they don't know how to fake must be evidence that Apollo was real. They then assume that their speck of so-called evidence grants them an exemption from having to account for all the evidence to the contrary, or in most cases, even mentioning that such evidence exists. Which brings us to the next objection. In his response, McConnell had asked this question. I have one quick question and I'd like to see what you have to say about it. We watched the Apollo 17 Lunar Module Ascent Stage fly up into space for quite a long time and the camera pans almost all the way up before the ascent stage flies off screen. Where are the cables? Where are the rigs? More importantly, where are any signs of anything that looks anything like a film set? I don't see them. In my response, I stated that black wires were probably used so that the said wires would blend in with the background. I also showed that the Langley Research Center would have been the perfect place to film this. More importantly, where are any signs of anything that looks anything like a film set? I also pointed out that the background scene in this video just seems to abruptly end, as would be the case on a film set. In response, a certain internet troll offered us this montage showing mountain ledges and cliffs, and amusingly enough, examples of mountains that are completely different in terrain to the foreground. This argument is bunk for a number of reasons. Firstly, NASA claims they specifically avoided landing the Apollos near cliffs or on top of hills or mountains for safety reasons. In the case of Apollo 17, they supposedly landed in the pit of a large valley. Secondly, 
All the Earth examples I've seen that are taken on flat terrain clearly show the foreground features gradually disappearing before we finally get to the background. In the Apollo videos and stills, the foreground just abruptly ends. Do any of these propagandists even look at their own examples? Apparently, this was not ample enough evidence of a film set for the pro-NASA side. And they have begged the question, where are the overhead structures where the cranes are located? Hmm, let's see. You are trying to fake the moon landing, you know the gantry structures would probably stand out. Um, you think you might, you know, paint the steel structures black or wrap black tarpaulins around them so they'd blend in with the night sky? Maybe? Or perhaps do it in post-production. Like record the movie on film, develop the frames, then manually black out the cables and support structures before re-photographing it, etc. Either method would work. As a final point, some new evidence has come to light that warrants attention. It concerns the Delta II rockets. The Delta II rockets used a two-stage propulsion system, the first of which was a kerosene and liquid oxygen mixture, and solid rocket boosters while the second stage uses aerosene 50 and dinitrogen tetroxide, the same propellants used by the LEM. McConnell directed my attention to this video showing a Delta II launch as recorded by a side-mounted camera, all the way to the start of the second stage. In the first stage, we see the liftoff with the kerosene and solid rocket boosters. Then comes an intermediate phase where small vernier thrusters are firing for altitude adjustment. I'm not sure what type of fuel they used, but you can make out their bursts of yellow flame now and then. Then the first stage detaches, and the second stage's hypergolic engine fires up. Here we see a yellow-orange fireball, followed by an apparently invisible exhaust as the craft accelerates away. So does this mean the exhaust is invisible after all? Unfortunately, the placement of the camera isn't giving us a full picture, Referring back to our vacuum test picture, we see small amounts of exhaust spraying out to the side. While not invisible, this spray would be harder to see when looking through it from above, rather than edge on. Directly under the engine bell though, the exhaust is quite bright. Presumably, it would be the same for the Delta II, except the positioning of this camera doesn't permit this view, so we can't conclude much from this. I did some searching around and found some videos from the ground-based cameras that tracked the launch of the Delta IIs. Miles per hour, standing by for main engine cutoff about 10 seconds from now. Vernier engine uh, chamber pressure beginning to drop as main engine chamber pressure beginning to drop. Standing by for Miko. And we have Vico standing by for one two sep. And we have one, two, sep. And second stage chamber pressure is increasing. Good burn on the second stage. And we have fairing separation. Second stage chamber pressure now uh, right where we want it to be. Very good burn on the second stage. Viewed from the ground, the second stage plume clearly burns like a torch. It's just like the LEM vacuum chamber tests and the Titan launches. Propagandists are fond of citing the Delta II second stage as proof for their cause. Yet they only show us the footage from the onboard cameras, not the ground-based cameras that obviously have a clearer view of the engine plume. We've got separation, second stage chamber pressure beginning to build. Second stage burn underway. Now presumably, they can come back objecting that these videos were filmed with night vision cameras, and dismiss these videos on that ground alone. It's a moot point. Anyone can look at the relative brightness between the plumes from the first stage, second stage, and even the verniers. All three look quite similar in these videos.